Welcome to the first episode of Scotch by Scotch West. Okay, if you don't know what's going on here, uh, a number of my Twitter followers uh, have ordered a number of uh, whiskeys that they would like tasted and reviewed into local Fidei, uh liquor stores. Okay, um, we have them right here. We're going to taste them, review them, give them a score, no frills. Let's jump right in and give it a try. Okay, number one, okay, right here, okay, we have a bottle of the Art Bag, okay? Now this is a staple, okay? Probably your, you know, one of the top options, okay? I'm, I can give it an advance review already because I've tried this before, okay? Everybody has Art Bags, you know, for your entry level uh, Scotch whiskey, okay? This is a banger, no doubt, okay? Have it get it let's give it a quick taste all right now uh, all right a couple things about tasting whiskey okay always have some water nearby okay especially if you're tasting a couple of different ones but anytime you're drinking whiskey okay water is the perfect companion have a water okay now let's get right to the yard bag okay this is the 10 year right here okay uh, you know tasting whiskey uh, very similar to tasting wine. Okay, first let's look at the color real quickly. All right, it's a beautiful golden, you know, honey color. Okay, really nice. Okay, you can see by the way it swirls in the glass. Okay, the legs show you there's not a ton of sugars in this. Okay, all business in this Art Bag 10 year. All right, we give it a smell. All right, right off the bat. Okay, you're gonna smell that smoke, okay? This is in, this is from Isla, okay? Uh, my favorite uh, whiskey region, okay? Uh, Isla is northern, northern Scotland, and um, that's where uh, your smokiest, peatiest single malts will come from, okay? So, looks beautiful and golden, nice light golden, all right? Smells like a campfire in your glass, okay? Gotta love that. All right, and uh, let's give it a quick taste. All right, and uh, everybody knows the rules. Okay, one triple pour. I think that's about right. Okay, uh, so we're gonna get a little. You know, bear with me as we get through for uh, four options here tonight. All right, tasting. Okay, uh, again. Okay, very heavy on the smoke. Okay, which I personally love. Okay, at this point, I don't really even taste the smoke that much, but I know it's there, and I'm telling you guys that you're gonna taste that smoke. Okay, beyond that, okay, delicious, so tasty. Um, you know, we've got a, uh, a fair amount of um, medicinality, they call it, all right? Uh, when you taste it, you'll know what that means. Okay, but this is a highly medicinal scotch. Okay, very smoky. Okay, obviously, um, uh, there's a number of points in the whiskey process that contribute to the flavor, okay? Uh, there's the grain it comes from, okay? Um, for instance, uh, bourbon, okay, which has to come from Kentucky, uh, is, uh, is largely corn-based. Um, uh, single malt scotch whiskeys uh, come from uh, malted barley, Okay, um, wheats and rye and various different grains uh, can all make whiskeys. Okay, but uh, that will affect the flavor. Okay, and as you taste and get to know more and more, uh, you know you'll be able to tell the difference. Um, additionally, okay, in addition to the grain that it comes from, okay, it's grain alcohol, obviously, um, also called brown alcohol. Um, there's, uh, there's the aging process, okay? So whiskey will take on the flavor of the barrel that it's aged in, okay? And good whiskeys generally will be aged, okay? So uh, there's a, um, in the last couple of years, there's a big push, um, you know, it's very in vogue, uh, especially because uh, we're in a, you know, a general whiskey boom, okay? Um, there's lots and lots more whiskey being consumed in general, which means you have smaller and smaller labels uh, producing more whiskeys, but there ends up being a shortage of, uh, of 
barrels to age the whiskey in. Okay, so a lot of distilleries are buying old barrels or are buying barrels from various places, but a lot of whiskey is not being aged in new barrels, but in old barrels that come from various other distilleries or wineries. So you'll see uh, whiskey aged in um, port barrels, in sherry casks, okay? Any kind of oak barrel that these distilleries can lay their hands on, okay, they're going to uh, age their whiskeys in and the wood naturally both takes on a, um, uh, you know, the flavor notes of the uh, alcohol that it aged previously or held previously, but also contributes the, um, contributes the, that flavor back into the whiskey. So the barrel is a major factor too. And uh, the period for which, the length of time for which it's aged in that barrel also makes a big difference, both because it gives the barrel a longer time to contribute that flavor profile to the whiskey and because um, during the aging process, okay, the whiskey uh, actually breathes. Alcohol is highly volatile, meaning that the, um, uh, the molecules will, uh, will vaporize naturally, okay? And so if you look at a 50-year aged barrel versus say a 10-year aged barrel, the level of, um, of liquid in the barrel in a 50-year will be much lower okay because uh, alcohol is fairly volatile okay uh, which means uh, naturally the uh, the liquid will, will vaporize and escape okay and so um, uh, so that's another reason that longer aged whiskeys or longer aged alcohol in general will cost more okay because there's less physically less of it uh, it will um, uh, it, it will it will evaporate Okay, through the porous um, uh, cask that it's aged in. Okay, and if you look at some of these really old casks, okay, um, the level of liquid in them will be very, very, very low. And so, in addition to it being more rare because it's aged longer, uh, it will also uh, there will also be physically less of it. So uh, let's move on. Um, but yeah, so there's a number of places that the flavor comes from the grain, the how long it's aged, what kind of wood it's aged in, okay? Uh, a number of things, uh, especially with a single malt, it's kind of simple. With a blend, it gets more complex. But anyway, thank you to whomever uh, it was that sent me this art bag, especially in the first episode of Scotch by Scotch West, okay? Art bag 10 year, right on the money, right on the money. Let's move on. All right, what's next? Okay. This is an old favorite, a real favorite. Okay, here we go. I don't know if you can, if it reads well on the video. Okay, but this is a Craig Alaki 13. All right, what we call Craig in the business. All right, let's unbox this together. All right. All right. Nice, uh, you know, really, really nice presentation. Okay, looks like looks like something we would have seen out of the Stamp Act. Okay, um, all right, a 13 year. Now this is a space side. This is a single malt, another single malt. Okay, always a favorite. Okay, with Bond Strader. Okay, by all means. Okay, I'll review single malts all day long. Okay, send single malts, but uh, the Craigalaki. All right, space side, and you know, feel free to correct me in the comments on the uh, pronunciation, okay? But uh, this is a uh, this is absolutely a Scottish single malt whiskey, okay? Um, and this is space side. There's four Scottish uh, whiskey regions, okay? Um, and uh, so space side. Okay, first off, everybody knows the rules, a triple pour. Okay, I think we got it there. We'll, we'll put a little extra in. Okay, now it's definitely a triple pour. All right, that's another thing, okay, by the way. Uh, all right, the triple pour. I love you, pour a 
until you can say I love you. Uh, so um, anyway, uh, Craig Lockie, um Anyway, Space Side is uh, characterized by a grassier, honeyer flavor for sure. Okay, so um, you know if the um, if the uh, smoky, peaty flavor, you know, if that campfire nature of Ardbeg, of the Isla scotches is too much, okay, which it is for many, you know, intro scotch drinkers, okay, um, the, uh, there's a number of other scotch regions, uh, you know, that aren't, you know, uh, quite as strong. And uh, so Speyside is characterized by more uh, grassy, honeyer uh, flavor profile. All right, so uh, here we are, all right, with the Craigalaki 13 year, okay? And the year, uh, if that wasn't obvious, um, you know, is the number of years that it sat in the cask. All right, so here we are with a triple four of the Craigalaki 13, all right? Uh, again, okay, when we're tasting a whiskey, right? The first thing we do is look at the color, obviously, okay? You know, uh, one of my close friends uh, is a pastry chef, all right? And uh, the first, you know, I, you know I'm know, i uh, an avid chef myself, okay? The first thing, okay, about anything you're about to imbibe, food, alcohol, whatever, it, you know, you eat with your eyes first, okay? So what's the first thing you see, okay, looking at this whiskey, okay? it's. It's a beautiful dark uh, golden color. Okay, um, again, swirl it for a second, and you'll see. Okay, this is obviously a little more uh, viscous. There's a little more sugar than the art bag. Okay, in fact, a lot more sugar. Okay, and it's uh, you know this one's a dark amber color, and um, it's uh, you know a, a beautiful dark amber with a little more sugar, as you can tell from the legs. All right, second thing, let's give it a smell. Okay, you can obviously smell the, uh, the cooking process, okay? The process that created this, uh, uh, this whiskey, all right? Um, like I said, the scotch flavors, okay? Part of the process is uh, they absorb um, either the, uh, the cooking of the peat or space sides are usually uh, heated or they absorb the heat of, of, an, of an oil or a fire kiln, okay? And I happen to know that Craig comes from an oil kiln, which you can absolutely smell, okay? And again, okay, when you're tasting whiskey or when you're just drink, drinking whiskey, okay, water is a plat, is a, it's an essential component, okay? In fact, um, uh, you know, a couple hundred years ago, okay, American um, whiskey uh, distilleries would not only um, bottle their whiskey, okay, but they would also bottle what's called branch water. You might see that on old TV shows, whatever. When they're talking about branch water, okay, that's the water from the creek, okay, that fed the distillery. All distilleries have to be on a river or a creek or some kind of flowing source of water for a number of reasons, okay? And whiskey has water in it, okay? And, the, you know, so when you're drinking whiskey, uh, you want to be drinking water, but ideally to not, you know, and this is impossible these days, but, uh, you know, historically speaking, okay, in order to, um, to not uh, dilute the flavor of the whiskey you're drinking, you would drink branch water. And sometimes in old movies or old TV shows, you'll see someone order a whiskey in a branch water, okay? And that's because they want the whiskey and the water that's bottled from the same distillery from the river or the creek that's feeding that distillery, okay? Without uh, diluting the flavor, okay? Because a lot of the water that, uh, the, that feeds the distillery actually affects the flavor as well. So anyway, here we are, okay, with the Craigalaki 13, all right? Feel free to correct my pronunciation. I'm not Scottish, um, 
All right, we have a triple four. It's we're on our second triple four. Things are gonna get wild tonight. All right, let's take a look. All right, like I say, a beautiful dark amber color. All right, the first smell, immediately, you get that classic space side, okay, grassy, honey smell. All right, um, you know, it's, it's quite floral, okay? And let's give it a taste, but. Delicious, all right? Again, a lot of medicinality, okay? No doubt about it. And a lot of caramel as well. Doesn't quite come out in the, um, in the nose, okay? But the minute you taste it, okay, a lot of caramel. All right, so again, this is the Craig Lockie 13, okay? It's a space side whiskey, single malt, Okay, 13 years. Let's see what they say on the uh, on the barrel on the uh, on the packaging here. All right, so they're very proud of their you know location. Okay, they talk about the fact they're on the river confluence of the River Fittick and the River Spey. Okay, again, okay. The water that feeds your distillery is critical, okay, to the, you know, to the flavor of your whiskey, okay? So there's a reason they talk about the rivers that they're on, and if they're on a confluence of two rivers, okay, that's a factor in the flavor, okay? Again, rivers, you know, they're going to be fresh water, okay, uh, and that's, that's, that's a factor, okay? Um, I happen to know that uh, Craig Lockie, um, was dormant for a while. They started uh, releasing their single malt whiskeys uh, again in 2014. You know, again, we're in a whiskey boom. Okay, so you're going to get a lot of old uh, distilleries uh, releasing their whiskeys now. Okay, again, you know, it, we're just we're we're in a boom, and you're going to see a lot of smaller distilleries um, becoming more relevant. Um, You'll even see one major factor, random, is um, you'll see a lot of um, what will call themselves distilleries but aren't actually distilling alcohol, buying leftover alcohol from large distilleries, aging it themselves and releasing it under their own uh, label. That's not the case here, but there's a lot going on in the whiskey game. Um, and uh, obviously, single malt being the most, um, you know, the most interesting, uh, the most distinguished these days. So anyway, uh, we're looking at the Craig Lockie 13. Okay, very tasty. Okay, like I said, uh, the nose is quite floral. Okay, the classic Speyside um, uh, profile of grass. You know, you can really smell that tall grass almost salty tall grass marsh and um, and the minute you taste it uh, it's honey it's honey it's rainy days and uh, a lot of caramel in there there we go so I'd really like to thank um, uh, who sent whoever sent me the, uh, the, the Craig 13. All right, we'll thank everyone by name at the end. Okay, getting right back to it. We got the next bottle is this Rowan Co. Whiskey, Irish Whiskey, Dublin. Let's see what's up real quick. Moving forward. Trying to open the thing. We got them. Here we go. Bottle number three. Okay, this is obviously a blend. Okay, they say it right here. Blended Irish whiskey. Okay, immediately we're in a different place from our um, single malts. That's fine, okay. Any whiskey you want reviewed, we'll do here on Scotch by Scotch West. No big deal. All right, here we go. All right. And like I said, 
Okay, sip of water. Everybody knows the rules. Triple four. <laughs> Let's give it a try. <laughs> now, there's a couple adjectives, okay, we should consider immediately. Okay, Irish, blended, okay? What does that mean to us? Okay, we're immediately, okay, if you wanna be a snob, and I am, Okay. All right. It's not going to be the same as the last two we tasted. All right. But let's give it a fair shake. Here we are. Okay. Like I said, first thing we do, we eat with our eyes. Okay. Let's take a look. Okay. It is a nice brown color. Okay. Nice amber. Okay. Hue. All right. Let's give it a, we gave it a look. Okay, let's give it a smell. I won't lie. <laughs> the initial, the initial smell, the initial aroma is nail polish remover. All right. All right. Yeah, no, it smells like paint. Now, you know, I, you know, you'll get to know me over the course of these episodes. I'm very fair. All right, it smells like something I would use to remove paint. All right, and generally speaking, all right, like I'm not a, I'm not a blended whiskey kind of guy, but whatever, let's, let's give it a fair shake, okay? We all appreciate whoever ordered this whiskey, all right, whoever contributed to our experience to the scotch by scotch west experience okay you know we thank them all right we will review any whiskey on this show but i can tell you right off the bat all right and like we already talked about all right whiskey you know alcohol is fairly volatile okay which means the molecules vaporize readily Okay, which contributes to the smell. Okay, so let's waft the smell. Wafting. All right, I can tell you already, this is not gonna be my favorite whiskey. All right, the, the color is, is kind of nice. The smell smells like something you'd use to thin paint or nail polish. All right, and let's, let's give it a try. All right, everybody knows the rules. Triple four, here we are. Scotch by Scotch West initial episode. Thank you for sending this bottle, guys. All right, here we go. Let's give it a taste. Okay, surprisingly smooth. Tasting notes. Tasting notes. Heavy on the orange, I would say. Okay, and very floral as well. Very heavy on the orange. Uh, very heavy on the um, floral. All right, and that's all I can really say for this blend. All right, I'm gonna do you all a favor and finish this triple pour. All right, but honestly, there's practically a, a, you know, I would almost even say there's like a chlorine flavor. If you've ever like been swimming in a chlorinated pool and swallowed too much water, all right, I'm doing this for you. Thank you for following. Thank you for watching. Go and co. I'm gonna give you a solid 3.5, all right? And um, you're welcome, all right? Heavy chlorine flavor, chlorine, orange. I don't know, I don't know what else you blended in there. Um, so here we are, all right? 
on the Scotch by Scotch West, okay? Inaugural episode. Thank you for watching. Thank you for those who contributed. And uh, now we have our final bottle, okay, for the night. Okay, thank you for watching this far. And here we are, okay. Um, I will warn you, okay, this final bottle tonight is not a whiskey, okay. This was contributed by a friend of mine. Uh, this is a friend of mine from the trading floor when I was first learning to, when I was, when it was in my first trading floor. I would say, you know, this is a sadistic move by a friend of mine, but John ordered a bottle of Gaermeister, not a whiskey, okay? But, okay, here we are, F1, and you know what? I'm gonna stick to, you know, I'm gonna stick to, uh, you know, my word. I'm gonna taste what was sent to me, and here we are. Okay, John sent a bottle of Jägermeister. Okay, everybody knows the rules. Let's taste this Jägermeister, give it a try. We'll review it as if it were a whiskey. Here we are, everybody knows the rules. One triple four, we're on our fourth. All right. So, um, first we look at it, okay? Heavily dark. Okay. The legs suggest it's extremely sweet. Okay. A lot of sugars. Let's smell it. You don't even need to get close to the glass to tell. Okay. It's extremely sweet. Okay. Obviously, the minute you get close to this, you can tell. Okay, we're talking about an anisette liquor. All right, what's anisette mean? All right, anisette is generally black licorice, okay? Heavily in the black licorice, heavily dark, extremely sweet. Now again, all right, let's take a quick look, okay? At the bottle, okay, the Jägermeister, now this is the thing everybody knows, okay? Everybody's gotten fucked up in college on Jägermeister. Okay, let's give it a minute, okay, of its due. But Jägermeister, what does that mean, okay? Jäger, it's a German liquor, all right? Jäger, and why do they put the stag on the bottle? on the label, okay? A Jaeger is a hunter, okay? So it's German liquor, okay? The Jägermeister means hunting master, okay? So the reason that this whole liquor exists, okay, is that, uh, you know, after the hunt, okay, you have a drink, okay? So, you know, you go out, you hunt, an eight point buck. Okay, and what are you gonna drink after that? Let's taste it. All right, here we are, the Jägermeister. Everybody knows the rules, a triple four. Okay, we smell it. It smells like uh, black licorice and the set, as they say. All right, and here we are, we're almost done. And you've done a great job. All right. The anise is overwhelming. Let's give it a taste. Okay. As you can tell, just from swirling it, there, you know, the legs indicate there's a ton of sugars. Almost too many sugars. Okay, to the point where it should probably only be mixed. Okay, part of a mixed drink. But, as I promised, okay, everybody knows the rules, triple shots only. Let's finish this up.
Thank you for watching the first episode of Scotch by Scotch West. Okay, I've had a great time and I hope you did too. All right, uh, we got a lot more work to do. Okay, please uh, hit the subscribe, hit the like. Okay, uh, YouTube tells me that if we get a thousand subscribers, we can start doing live episodes. Okay, so let's try and hit that goal. Okay, and if you've got a favorite whiskey, okay, that you want uh, to include on the show, okay, or if there's a new one that you want my opinion on, okay, uh, like I said, order it to any local Phi Dye liquor store, I'll pick it up, we'll review it, okay, and we'll have a great fucking time, okay? Okay, a huge thanks, okay, big ups to my followers who contributed bottles to this episode. Okay, hype as fuck. All right, I'll see you on the next one. Okay, can't wait.